Where we left off last time, we made, or your cell did, in glycolysis, it took glucose, and it made two molecules of a substance we call pyruvate, and it made four ATP, two of which were just recovered from the um, investment phase of, of glycolysis, but we made, essentially, we made two net ATP, um, and then we made two molecules of this, this energy carrier NADH. So those were the things that sort of were the end product of glycolysis. Um, remember that NADH is that, that molecule that we said could be either oxidized or reduced, meaning that it's, it's a carrier of electrons. It's also a coenzyme, just for this idea of understanding what coenzymes can be. So remember we said in the last chapter, we said that enzymes can also have cofactors, and coenzymes, so this is considered a coenzyme. Okay, so in eukaryotic cells, so we're not talking prokaryotes right now, we're talking eukaryotic cells, um, we uh, assume we're all breathing, right? And since we are eukaryotes, um, we know that we get taken oxygen. So if oxygen is present in the cell, then the pyruvate are able to go into the mitochondria. So we have pyruvate, those two products of glycolysis, which are going to enter into the mitochondria, and they are going to get converted. And they're going to get converted to something we call acetyl-CoA, or it's also called acetyl-coenzyme A. And then once it's made, it's going to enter the cycle that we'll talk about, the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, in which we're going to release some carbon dioxide and we are going to, to create more NADH and you're going to see how that all works here in a minute. But this idea of the intermediate step, that before we get into the Krebs cycle, is what we're calling oxidation of pyruvate or aka the link reaction. And so this is where pyruvate gets, gets converted into a form that then can enter something called the citric acid cycle. Now, I, I go through this in, in great detail on my EduCreations video, kind of a step-by-step -step when I'm drawing, which I think is a little bit easier to follow than this, but this is where I'm using the, the OpenStax slides to kind of correlate this with what you're reading. So here is the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. And here's where acetyl-CoA enters into the cycle. So we're going to see acetyl-CoA coming in, and it's going to join this particular molecule right here, which is called oxaloacetate. Now this is a molecule name that I do want you to know. So as this is the beginning of the cycle, so a molecule that's present, oxaloacetate, is going to join with this molecule acetyl-CoA, and it's going to form a molecule of citrate. Now that's where the name citric acid cycle comes in. Where this all happens is in an area of the mitochondria called the mitochondrial matrix. And so we're going to look at an enlarged picture of where this is in the mitochondria, but it's going to be considered that um, the matrix. So just keep that in mind. So when so Acetyl-CoA comes in, joins with oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is a five carbon compound. And it's gonna, once it's joined with this, we're gonna end up with a six carbon, I'm sorry, this is a four carbon compound because acetyl-CoA has two carbons. So four carbons here, two carbons here, add it up, we get five, uh, six carbons here. So citrate is a six carbon molecule. And then through a whole series of reactions that you're going to see going around the cycle, which I'll go into detail in, we get citrate gets converted and energy gets extracted. So we're going to remove energy in the form of electrons as we go from one to the next, also giving off a waste product of carbon dioxide in several places along the way and generating a very small amount of something that's going to become ATP. And that 
term right here, it's going to form something called GTP first, which stands for guanine triphosphate, just like this one is adenine triphosphate. You may remember those names, guanine and adenine, from when we talked about DNA, the structure of the, the, the nucleotides in DNA. Um, but we're going to make a little bit of this GTP, and then GTP is, is, um, usually goes on and gets converted into ATP. So then we go back up, and once all of that has happened, we get back to oxaloacetate, which then picks up another acetyl-CoA and goes around again. So this just keeps going and going. So as long as there's oxygen present, we can get that this reaction will go forward. Okay, so we don't have to think so much in this in this case at all about any of this being endergonic. These are all going to be exergonic processes. We're going to, they're going to be driven um, forward and around the cycle. So we don't add any ATP into any of this. We instead are going to extract some of the electrons, and we're going to see that in the form of NADH. And a new molecule, which I should mention here, another electron carrier, FAD, which is gets uh, in the is the oxidized form is um, FAD, but the reduced form, the one that's higher in energy because it's carrying electrons, will be FADH2. So here's a bigger picture of that, probably a little easier to see. Here's the acetyl-CoA that came in from the link reaction. Here's oxaloacetate, that four carbon compound, forms citrate, which is a six carbon compound, and then gets converted. Things get removed from it along the way. We, we make some NADH. We, we generate some carbon dioxide, which is a waste product. We make some more NADH, et cetera, generate more carbon dioxide. We make some GDP, which becomes ADP here. We keep going, and this is where FAD comes in. FAD becomes uh, um, reduced to FADH2. Here you can see we have um, some water entering into this reaction. We keep going up. We generate a little bit more um, NADH. And again, we'll go through all of this again. So if you're kind of dizzy with all the letters, don't worry. And then we come back up again. Oxaloacetate is regenerated. So now it can join again with another acetyl-CoA coming in from that link reaction. And there you go. And so the end product of this, at, at this moment, is that we ended up with two ATP being generated from glycolysis. And now we are going to get two more from this cycle that we just looked at. So we so far have a net of four ATP. We are going to make quite a bit of carbon dioxide. Um, two was in that, that link reaction which I didn't get into detail on here, but I will later, and four from the citric acid cycle. And then we have a much bigger um, result or yield here. We have 10 NADHs total, two from glycolysis and two from the oxidation of pyruvate or the link reaction, and then six from the cycle we just looked at. And then we have two... FADH2, okay, which is also going to be made at the end of this citric acid cycle. So basically what has happened is glucose has been taken in by the cell, converted many, many times. It's being oxidized, meaning we're stripping away electrons from it, and we're putting them somewhere else so that we can use those electrons to make uh, some, some energy, and we're going to see how that happens. So we are going to go to the last step, but this is what I wanted to get to just to show you this picture. Here's a mitochondria, or mitochondri, mitochondrion, right, because that's singular. Um, here's the matrix. So you can see in this blue in this diagram, that's the matrix. But in the mitochondria, um, you see that these it has these um, kind of weaving back and forth, these membranes. So it has all this um, inner membrane area with a lot of membranes going back and forth in here. And we're, and that's going to be really important coming up. So that's a good stopping point for...
we'll, we'll go into this last step, which is called oxidative phosphorylation in the next video.